Hi, I'm Craig from the WPI Robotics Program, and today we're going to start talking about sensors that can measure rotation. In this video, we're going to start by looking at sensors that can do analog output. So let's get started by looking at some pots. Potentiometers, or POTS, are analog devices. We can use them to measure angular motion, but only a limited amount of angular motion. Typically, the range of motion of a POT like this is around 270 degrees. So we can use this to measure limited angles. A robot arm that's moving, but you wouldn't use it, for example, for measuring a wheel that's rotating, because you would need to be able to go beyond 270 degrees, typically. So let's talk about how it works electrically. There's three terminals. One terminal will typically be your power, five volts, let's say. The other terminal at the other end will be zero volts or ground. And the middle one is the wiper. And what we're going to end up measuring on that is a variable voltage. And that variable voltage is gonna be directly related to the shaft position of the pot. If we think about how it works from an electrical standpoint, let's look at the following diagram. So what we see here is a schematic representation of the pot on the left-hand side of our diagram. There's a fixed resistance, 10k ohms in this case, connecting the two end terminals. The wiper moves back and forth along that fixed resistance. We're showing the fixed resistance is more or less a straight line here, but we know that it, in reality, is an arc. The right-hand diagram shows how the pot can be viewed as a voltage divider. As the wiper moves, the upper variable resistance, labeled A, gets larger or smaller, while the lower variable resistance, labeled B, gets smaller or larger. But those two resistances are coupled. What will always be true is that the sum of A plus B is a constant, 10k ohms in this example. To use the pot as a sensor, we typically will connect one end to 5 volts, the other end to ground, and then the wiper will connect to an analog input on your microprocessor. We're going to have a voltage then that varies as the pot turns, and that voltage will vary between 0 and 5 volts as the pot moves from one end of its range to the other. You're going to have that analog input going to uh, an analog to digital converter in your microprocessor, and that's going to return a number to you when you, in your code, call uh, the conversion routine uh, to get the uh, conversion done from the voltage to a number. Suppose you wanted to use the pot to measure the joint angle of a robot. We've got two links. The pot body, this part of the pot, would be connected physically to one of the links. The other link is going to be put into motion with some kind of a motor or a gearbox that has a shaft that's attached to the other link. That shaft would be also attached to the shaft of the pot. So as this shaft rotates and causes the link to move, the shaft of the pot will also move. And you can use that to determine the angular position of the one link with respect to the other. Here's another example that you could use in a first competition. Suppose you have a robot on the playing field and you've got some type of a visual sensor, a light sensor, that can be elevated. And that light sensor is looking at a target up on the wall that's illuminated. And you've got some way of determining when that uh, light sensor is correctly pointed at the target. What you're interested in is this angle here. All right? Knowing that angle, and if you also know the height of the illuminated target above the floor, you can then use a little trigonometry to calculate the distance the robot is away from the wall, something that's probably very important for you in certain competitions. So far, we've been talking about pots that have a limited range of motion, about 270 degrees. There are also pots that are called multi-turn pots. They still have a limited range of motion, but it might be as much as 10 complete turns. So you'll sometimes hear the term 10-turn pot. How could you use one of those? Well, suppose you had an elevator mechanism on your robot. So you've got some tracked device that goes up and down, possibly in a straight line. Maybe it's driven by a rack and pinion system. What you could do is you could attach the shaft of the pinion gear to the shaft of the 10-turn pot. And as long as the pinion gear didn't turn more than 10 complete revolutions, you could use that to then figure out where the position is of your elevator mechanism. So lots of different ways of using pots on your robots to measure different kinds of angular rotations, 
So in some cases, you're looking at something that's actually moving through an angle. In other cases, you're using the angular rotation to determine uh, a displacement in, in a linear fashion. Pots are inexpensive, fairly rugged, as long as you don't short them out or drive them into their mechanical stops too aggressively, and can be used for all sorts of different applications. Now, another common problem that you can run into is where you're trying to couple the one shaft of the pot itself with another shaft. And so, for example, here, um, I've got some kind of a flexible material, and often what will happen is students will uh, use this material here uh, or something like this. They might try uh, to use a, um, a piece of elastic tubing or possibly even electrical tape to, uh, to couple the, the, the one shaft to the pot shaft. And the problem with these is that uh, you can get some slippage. All right, You can get the, uh, the one shaft um, I'm now up against the, uh, the, the stop here, but I can still rotate this shaft. All right? um, I have to work at it in this case, but if you were using things like an elastic tubing or, or even electrical tape, it's much easier to have the one shaft rotate and the other shaft not rotate at all. Or sometimes what can happen is, is that you're, they'll just get a little loose with respect to each other. You're depending on friction here to, to have the one shaft rotate with the other. One way that this is uh, worked against is, is to use some kind of a coupling like this. This one was 3D printed um, and allows the, uh, the, the flat on this uh, pot shaft to fit into this and would seem to solve the problem. But even in this case, uh, you can see that there's, there's a fair amount of play here, um, sometimes up to maybe 10, 15 degrees of play, and that can be a problem. Any play like that uh, introduces error into your system. So your best bet is, is to have some kind of a really nice rigid uh, coupling here and then you can really lock it down with, uh, with the set screws uh, so that you, you have no, no play at all. That's your best solution for slippage. The last thing I'd like to mention is that a pot is a good example of an absolute encoder. What I mean by that is that there's a direct relationship between the position of the pot's shaft and the voltage that you're measuring on the wiper. Let's now look at magnetic shaft encoders. This looks very much like a regular pot, a little bit smaller, uh, but it has one major difference. And the major difference is that you can continuously rotate this as far as you want in either direction. So there's no internal mechanical stops to this. The behavior of this electrically is much the same as a regular pot. We, may, we need to think through exactly what the implications are of not having any mechanical stop. Your voltage on the wiper will go from 0 volts to 5 volts as the shaft rotates from one stop to the other stop. What happens when you rotate it beyond 360 degrees, though? What would you expect then? Well, there's two logical possibilities. One is, is that if you got a, a voltage change of 0 volts to 5 volts through a shaft angle change of 0 degrees to 360 degrees, then as you went past 360 degrees, one possibility is, is that the output voltage gets bigger than 5 volts. That's doable, uh, but if we think that through a little bit more, it causes problems. So what actually happens is that as the shaft changes from 0 to 360 degrees, the output voltage will change from 0 to 5 volts. And then as you approach the 360 degree point, let's remember that on a compass, 360 degrees is the same as 0 degrees. You're pointing in the same direction. So we can take advantage of that here. And as we approach the 360 degree point, what will happen then is as we approach it and then go past it, the voltage will suddenly drop. It'll discontinuously drop from 5 volts straight down to 0 and then start to climb again. So this is the type of output that you're going to get from a magnetic shaft encoder. The advantage is that, of course, you can, you can turn it uh, as much as you want in either direction. You do have to be careful that you don't turn it too rapidly. There are limits to how fast you can rotate it, and those are limits that you'd find in the spec sheet for the device. Physically, magnetic shaft encoders look much like a pot. Uh, they might be somewhat smaller, as in this case, uh, but they mount pretty much the same. They look pretty much the same. They're not the same in price. 
Uh, this device uh, runs around $40, whereas a typical uh, pot runs $2 to $3. Okay, that's it for analog rotational sensors. I hope this video has been of some help.